What's up guys? Uh, today we're gonna talk about how I'm gonna make nutrition simple. Simplify things. Because it seems like everybody out there has got some sort of gizmo they're selling or some sort of product or diet that's complicated and does all these crazy things and people are like, oh wow, it takes all these things into consideration. When in actuality, getting in shape is much easier than that. Gaining weight is much easier than that. So I'm going to show you how an easy way to do it. And I'll tell you the last time I dieted down for a shoot, um, I actually even know this for a prep before, I actually didn't even write anything down. I had it all in my head. Because what I do is I'll count macros or I'll count carbohydrates, fats, and proteins in set increments. It's easier to keep track of. It's easy to manipulate. Now to do that, there's a few things going to take in consideration. So one, uh, when we talk about carbs, you have your, you know, your potatoes, your rice, your pasta, your oats, cream of rice, da 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 da. Um, your meats, you got your chicken, you got your lean meats, the fish, the chicken, 98% uh, ground chicken, 98% ground turkey, um, and then you have your fattier meats like your beef, your salmon, and your steak, which we'll discuss that in a second. And then you have kind of the in between where veggies, where people are like, well, I have to count my veggies as carbs or my veggies as calories. I don't think anybody should really do that. Um, in retrospect to a diet that's progressive over time, how many calories you start with is really irrelevant. Um, if you have a starting point and you know your portions or you know your macro breakdown, that's all that you need to know because moving forward, you're basing your changes really on the last few days, okay? That's all that matters. Numbers don't matter. People get too caught up with numbers and they end up manipulating themselves to fail. So back to veggies. Veggies I don't count as, uh, as calories. Uh, some of them do contain carbohydrates. So when I do build a basic simplified diet for somebody, I will usually include, uh, as you can see down here, uh, veggies, green beans, uh, leafy greens, zucchini, and asparagus. I do not include Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, or broccoli. They are great vegetables, 100%, but they are super vegetables. They cause a lot of gas bloating in most people, and I just try to avoid that to begin with without having to rule it out later, figure out what's causing the issue. Um, and they're more starchier vegetables. They have a little higher carbohydrates in them. It's not the end of the world by any means, but I personally do not do them for this situation, okay? So veggies are considered basically free in this scenario, all right? So basically what I have here is you have four meals, all right? And I'll just to make it simple for four meals. So say if you already have your macros and you're like, oh, well, this is what I roughly need per meal. And you have your 45, you have protein line, 45 grams of protein in each meal. Now, this protein is just counting complete protein, meats, eggs, whey, that's it. It's not counting protein from any other source. Uh, the fats, these are fats, and these are fats definitely uh, only added fats, not fats from the meat. I'm not counting those in this scenario. This is how you can keep it very simple, okay? Uh, and carbohydrates. 45 grams in each meal, 40 grams of protein in each meal, 15 grams of fat in each meal, all right? So now you have that structure, all right? Now down here, I wrote a key, and this is how you can do it. So uh, 52 grams of cooked white rice is about 15 grams of carbs. Um, 50 grams of cooked chicken breast is roughly 15 grams of protein. And five mLs of macadamia nut or olive oil is 4.5 grams, but I round up to five grams. And that's another thing, guys, is round up. If it's 28.5 grams of protein, you can call it 30. If it's 32 grams of protein, you can call it 30. Don't get caught in between. The devil's in the details. You don't need to get too crazy about measuring chicken as in 4.22226 or you know 106.6 grams. Just make it simple for yourself. That way it can go. Those two grams here and there are not gonna to equate to anything that you're gonna see in your physique or notice a difference. It just won't, okay? So this is say your baseline plan. And I would say you're trying to lose weight. It's very easy just to take 52 grams of rice out of each meal, making this 30 grams. Now you have 30 grams per meal and 15 gram increments of carbohydrates. So for example, say you didn't want to do that, you're trying to gain weight. So you bring back 52 grams. So now you have basically 160 grams of white rice per meal, 40 grams of carbs per meal. You want to increase that, you increase increments of 15. I just think it's a much simpler process to uh, when you change carbohydrate intakes up or down to go in increments of 15. 15 up, 15 down. 
And for protein, obviously, for most people, protein's not gonna change whether you're in your off-season, your contest prep. In some instances, it might change during contest prep and you will increase protein. But to keep it simple, go in increments of 15, um, or you can even break it down increments of 10. I do increments of 15. I think it's a little simpler. Um, 15 grams of protein uh, for a complete source per meal. Um, obviously, you're gonna have trace sources of protein from the starches and the fats if you add nuts and such, which I still don't keep track and I don't really count. I just kind of keep a, like, have an idea of it in my head. And you can keep it simple. Calories don't matter. I've never tracked my calories ever. It's a meaningless thing. People get really complicated with Fitbits and how many steps they do in the day and heart rate and calories burned. If you're not seeing the change in your physique, that information means nothing, nothing. It, just because you change the information and you exert yourself an extra 30 minutes per day and you exert no 300 calories, and you're not changing anything, it's, it's not making a difference. So it's cool, it might motivate you to move faster and that's good and all, but guys, make it simple, okay? So when you can organize your diet like this, it's great. So like when you have your added fats, obviously if say for example, uh, this grams of protein, 40 grams of protein from steak, you would probably omit the added fat, fat grams, because you have fat in that meal from that fatty meat, salmon, beef, or steak. So if it's a lean meat, you would keep the grams of added fat and so forth. So that's a good way you can just keep it simple. Every meal, keep it very equal macro breakdown. It's very easy to adjust, especially in increments 15 for carbs, like I just said, and increments of five for fats. Obviously, you don't want to jump 10 grams of fat per meal. That's a little, that's a little much. Someone could even argue jumping five grams of fat per meal if you're doing six meals a day is a substantial increase in fat. Um, but that's the easiest way to do it. And you, what you do is you can make a chart and you have like say eight fat sources you like the most. You know, macadamia nut oil, avocado, olive oil, peanuts, peanut butter, cashews, and write down what they weight. The weight is in grams per five grams of fat. Then you have a chart. You can put it in your fridge and then you increments of 15 of all the favorite carbs you have. Wheat pasta, uh, no yolk egg noodles, potatoes, uh, wheat bread, oats, cream of rice, cream of wheat, and go down the list and make increments of 15. And for protein, you can do increments of 10 or increments of 15 of your, of your favorite proteins. That way you can customize it to you. You have that chart on your fridge, and if you know your macro breakdown, say it's you know 60, 60, 30, so you can easily look at the fridge and figure out what you want to eat and match the macros to the weights that you need in those increments. It makes it super simple super easy and that way you can customize it to you you don't need a database to run by or you know everything to click into your fitbit because this is the problem with uh some of the databases is when you look up certain foods they might have slightly different breakdowns of chicken breast because it might be braised chicken breast chicken breast cooked in water chicken breast with skin without skin with salt no salt butter no butter so it's good to find one consistent number of one database and stay with that. If it's a couple grams off, it does not matter because that's what you've been doing the whole time. It's kind of like when people say to me, I think my scale's off, I gotta buy a new scale. Well, when you're trying to lose weight, it doesn't really matter because if you're using that same scale, that's the form of measurement you're using for consistency. Consistency is what matters when you move forward, not as much accuracy at that point. You wanna be as accurate as you can be when you first start. But once you move forward, all your changes and all your measurements are based on what you were doing, even if those measurements were off. After that, it's too late. I get this sometimes where someone's in prep for a show and they make an error. They're like, oh my gosh, I've been overeating rice. Or, you know, I've been measuring it this way. Oh my God, what do I do? Well, at that point in time, I was basing their changes off what they were supposed to be doing. And if they were doing that, and getting the result that I intended to, then you wouldn't change a thing, even if it is wrong, because the result is going the direction you want to. That's a prime example of kind of following suit with what's occurring and not getting too caught up in what is exactly accurate when you already have progression moving forward. May have lost some of you guys on that, but guys, this is a very simple breakdown. It's real super easy. Um, if you just want to do basics of nutrition and keep life simple, this is the way to do it. Make a chart, put it on your fridge of your favorite foods. Over time, you can add a favorite food in those increments. 
because it's very easy to add an increments of 15, fives, and tens. All right, hope you guys found that helpful.